Welcome everybody back to the Go Nearly 200 years have passed oh, since the end of the devastating religious war. The Empire fell, and its former provinces eventually became barbarian kingdoms. The Church managed to revive hope, and peace and prosperity reigned over the ruins of the former civilization. Over time, the influence of the Church only grew. But history is cyclical, and power cannot remain in one's hands for long. Wars between kingdoms flare up one after another. Hunger and poverty force people to abandon their homes and seek refuge in neighboring settlements. Can your dynasty unite the kingdoms and halt the advance of the Dark Ages? From this moment on, History is written by you. You left in the wrong hands. <clears throat> but anyway, welcome to the Gotos. And today we are playing the game by the name of Norland. It looks like it's got the same, uh, what's the word? It's like play style, look, graphics, stuff, as uh, Prison Architect, which we also plan on playing on the channel as well when it comes out. So. This will be a uh, start. Anyway. You are in charge of helping a noble family of lords who own a province in Norland achieve prosperity, security, and personal ambitions. Your lords obey your commands, but they also have their own will. Your history is just beginning. And yes, this is the tutorial. Just so you're aware. We need to stop and think. Pause the game by pressing space. And then speed up with one, two, and three. We're gonna leave that paused for now. While you can directly give orders to your lords, all characters in Norland have thoughts and needs. If these are not met, characters will become unhappy and start to cause problems. Select a lord, click them click on mood. Nice. Click on the mood tab. What is the mood tab? Oh, that makes sense. The most uh, basic of needs are food and rest, which are replenished by consuming food and alcohol. Hell yeah, brother. You have a stock of provisions for the time being, but it's necessary to ensure reliable food and alcohol production so your characters don't go hungry. To do this, let's learn to construct and manage buildings. Okay. In Norland, you only control the noble family. So you need to assign a manager to oversee the workers in the buildings. The instructions given by the managing lord are sufficient for three days. And on average, one lord can manage seven to ten... Damn. Let's appoint a manager to the hall where your builders are assigned. Select the hall. Management. Why, why her? Alright, we're going to pick her. Choose a lord for the managing role. Wait for the lord to distribute instructions to the workers. That's neat. Do they do most of the labor by themselves? Like the work by themselves? Because if so, that's neat. Working hours from 17 to 24. Is she, is she, is she gonna do it? Come on, my dog. There we go. Great, the workers are now aware of your plans and ready to start building. What is the primary resource used in construction? So our first priority is to build a lumber mill. Damn it. Sorry, I just smacked the mic. My bad. Now, let's build a rutabaga field. I don't know why, but I love that word. The rye field is best per placed on fertile soil, otherwise it will yield very little. Click the right mouse to go back one step to construction. Click resources, rutabaga field. Wait for the construction to be completed. Speed it up by pressing 1, 2, and 3. Okay. 
Hell yeah, we're going a little deep to go. Bang, 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 bang. Since employees need instructions, don't forget to assign managers to the new buildings. Know that the higher the Lord's management skill, the more additional product the building will produce under their management. Select Lumber Mill and assign a manager. Since she's manager of the other two buildings, she should probably be. I wouldn't let me do that the first time. Wait for the instructions to explain to the workers. Yeah, hey, chop down tree. Hey, plant rutabaga. I don't know what rutabaga is, but again, I want some in my life. Right. We have food production sorted out. Now it's time for alcohol, which helps to relieve fatigue after a hard day's work. We already have a built, or we have already, we have a built brewery. Fuck. Reading is hard sometimes. Let's order the support for maintaining a quantity of a hundred. Now it's necessary to appoint a manager for the brewery. And the peasants will take rutabaga from the warehouse by themselves, and at the end of the workday, they will bring the produced moonshine to the warehouse. Please note that you already have 50 units of moonshine. So to complete the task of producing 100 units, you will need an additional 50. Appoint a manager to a Le brewery. Still her, because she can manage up to 10. Ideally, each character will consume one unit of food and one unit of alcohol per day. Damn, alcoholics. Char characters will try to purchase higher quality goods whenever possible. Lords receive food and alcohol for free. Aw. Delivered to the hall by the servants who take it from the warehouse. On the right... Under the daily expenses heading, you can see the daily wages. On the left, you can set the prices and quantity of each resource that can be sold to the peasants every evening. Peasants first try to buy food and then use the remaining money on alcohol, if they can afford it. By regulating the prices and resource availability, you can influence their consumption of these resources, which affects their mood and financial savings. Currently, workers' wages are 8 gold coins. The price of rutabaga is 4, and the price of moonshine is 7. This is not enough for peasants to buy both rutabaga and moonshine. What the hell is rutabaga? Anyway. So, they will have to save for several days to go to the tavern. Let's reduce the price of moonshine to 4, so that the workers can buy it every day with their wages. This will make them happier. You know what? I live for you guys to be happier, okay? By satisfying the needs of peasants, you increase their average mood, which affects migration. A high average mood will attract new workers to your city. Conversely, unhappy peasants will leave the city and become criminals. Oh, ha, ha, what dirty bastards. At the bottom, the strongest negative thoughts of the peasants are written along with the number of characters that share them. We can see here that they are... Displayed by the favorless rutabaga and the unappetizing moonshine. Well, fucking beggars can't be choosers, okay? We can resolve this by producing higher quality products. Fuck them. They're peasants. But where can we get them? Ah, here comes the holy caravan to the rescue. Gold circulates through the economy of Norland in three ways. The pockets of pe peasant migrant immigrants trade with their neighbors and the holy caravan the holy caravan arrives in the evening every one to three days and is the main source of gold holy rings books and prisoners oh we can buy prisoners wait until the caravan arrives to the destination click on the caravan leader and select the lord 
to trade with him. Note that the higher lords trade skill. The more profitable the trade will be, the caravan leaves the city at midnight, so ensure you complete all your business. Sell 30 limit, limit, units of moonshine. Trader, this is me. 30 units. Buy the book Hop, Field, and Beer. And close the window. Now that we have a book on how to grow hops and produce beer, you can study it in the library through the knowledge room. If at least one lord has read a book, the abilities and effects it enables become available to all. However, when that lord dies, all benefits of knowledge will be lost. That's kind of gay. In the lord's character menu, you can see their main status indicators such as mood and loyalty, inventory, traits. You can hover over any icon and indicator to learn more of the details. If a lord's mood is too low, they may become depressed, refuse to carry out orders, and experience quickly decreasing loyalty. If loyalty falls below 25, the lord may leave your noble family and or start a rebellion. Well, you know what? We didn't want you anyway. Now, let's return to the main tab to fulfill this wish and thereby improve lords. Shiz. If you hover your mouse over the desire icon, I'm sorry if my voice is boring, I'm trying. You will see that the, this lord dreams of holy rings. The rings that appear in the resource list in the upper left corner belong to your king and are in his inventory. Click the action button, select the king section, select the reward. Once your king finds the time, he will reward the lord you have chosen. What the hell is a holy ring? Click on that guy. This guy. Wait for the king to reward the unhappy. Well, if you're unhappy, why do you deserve a reward? That's not how life works. I'm happy. Where are my subscribers? Probably uh, stop that music from playing. Hmm. Sorry, YouTube. Sorry, guys. About to get a whole lot more boring. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and. Okay. Holy rings, like the ones you bestowed upon your lord, cannot be produced. They can only be purchased from the Holy Caravan with gold. And since selling large volumes of goods lowers prices with the caravan, sometimes it makes sense to trade with neighbors where prices remain more stable. To enter into a trade contract, you must either be in the same state as your neighbor or have friendly relations with them. Now... Let's improve the neighboring king's attitude towards yours so we can then set up a trade deal. Go to the world map and click on the neighboring city, click the action button, select the lords, select hunt, and wait until the kings have hunted together. Aww. Holy hell, this map is big. Are we right here? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm glad they're choosing to be friends with somebody for me. Well, that sucks. Can we go watch him hunt? Well, there he goes. And no, we cannot. 
There's another game that I play like this. I can't remember what the hell it's called. When did we get a church? I don't remember building a church. Your kings had a great time together, and now the neighboring king considers you a friend. It's the perfect time to talk business. Click on the neighboring city to open its menu. Click the action button. Select trade, buy moonshine, assign your lord to finalize the deal. Why are we buying moonshine? I thought we could produce it. That makes no sense. Damn, that's quick. Many tasks on the world map can be carried out using messengers who act directly on the Motherfucker. My noble neighbor, for me, it is a great honor to engage in a trade agreement with you. Trade, above all, serves as an assurance of peace between our kingdoms. Why, thank you. Welcome to trade menu. Where in the hell are we located at? There we are. Oh, Holy Sophia. Bandits are stealthily approached. Have us. Yeah. Open the army menu. Every unit should be led by a lord. The higher their command skill, the higher the unit's morale will be and the lower the chances of the soldier fleeing when taking damage. You will also select the warriors who will form the squad and the equipment they will be armed with. The distribution of weapons among squad members will be automatic, with your more skilled soldiers receiving higher quality equipment. Good. Move all your warriors to the squad. They're already there. Move the second lord into the squad as well. Arm your squad. Bam. Six warriors, six weapons. Now, wait for your new warriors to pick up their weapons from the warehouse. Use a space bar to start and stop time. I know you guys can definitely read this on your own, but like, my voice is serenading you. It is time to attack. Hell yeah. Charge! Oh, he's about to get fucked. Oh, there's a little three there. Oh. Hell yeah! Get him! Get that! Bandit squad has been defeated and their leader is vanquished. Your warriors will capture and take as hostages those who survive. The peasants will bring them to the settlement later. Now is a good time to launch a counterattack on the map. Switch to the map. Go right there to that guy right there. We're going to go to attack on the local map. Squad of that dude. And let's go kick that ass. Wait for the reach to bandit camp. I can do that. I'm excited. Hells yeah. Oh, this game is fucking cool. Click the squad banner to control them. Use the right click to move them. And wait to move them. Is it just... Oh, it's two guys. Three guys. Sorry, I can't count. Math is hard. Oh man, that sounds rough. Victory! <laughs> Relationship with neighbors increase plus five. Attitude of matriarch toward your king plus twelve. During the game, you can always seek assistance by opening the help menu. Sometimes hints related to your current situation will appear here. You can disable this setting in the menu. 
After a few seconds of the hint being displayed, if you hey, motherfucker, go away. You have completed the basic training. You can now continue the current game at easy difficulty, or through the main menu, start a new game by creating your noble family and customizing the political map and difficulty to your liking. Well, that was short. Can't believe the tutorial was only 20 minutes. I assumed we'd at least, you know, get 30 or 40 minutes out of this. But apparently not. So on that note, since we go ahead and finish the campaign, we'll go ahead and end this episode here. And then we will probably, potentially, maybe, possibly, create a uh, series out of this. So those of you guys that did enjoy the episode today, please do leave a like, a comment, hopefully subscribe. If I did any uh, anything wrong, blame the tutorial, not me, because it wasn't me this time. But as always, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.